Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. There are many ways to help your community. You could do something as little as picking up trash. A Maui elementary school launches its Hiki no debut by showing us creative ways of improving our communities. The mother of a young woman with a rare chromosome deletion shows us how her daughter connects with the world. Big Island farmers give back by building a community soccer field on their land, free of charge. We'll open up the Hikino archives for a story on another community-minded farm, this time on Maui. We'll see how a band teacher takes a school music program that was in a shambles and builds it into a source of pride for the school. Learn how to make a beautiful Chinese lantern. And find out how video storytelling helped a group of third graders understand their special needs classmate. All on this episode of Hikino Can Do. Now, in their Hikino debut, students from Pomaka'i Elementary School on Maui show us how to do the right thing. I think my neighborhood is great, and it's just right for me. But even if I think my neighborhood is perfect, there are always things that can be improved. Instead of complaining about the problems, I try to be proactive and help out to make a difference. There are many ways to help your community. You could do something as little as picking up trash from your local park. You could also help out by solving a community problem. For example, if you see a bus stop without a bench, call your county and work with them to provide seats as people wait for the bus. You could even provide your own seats. Why not spend time with the kupuna? This helps to create a bond between the older generation and the much younger one. Research the closest assisted living community and find ways you could get involved. Also, you could volunteer. You might enjoy working at a school, food bank, or an animal shelter. No matter how perfect your neighborhood is, there are still ways you can make your community a better place. This is Krishana Torser from Pomaika'i Elementary School for Hikino. Hikino is on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. We're here on the campus of Maui High School in Kahului, Maui. Our school's approach to putting together a yearbook is a 15-month process, which begins in February of the previous school year. Our yearbook staff first chooses a theme for the yearbook and the layout of the pages. Then, they begin to think of content and sections to produce. Once that has been decided, there is a six-month process to gather all the content. The yearbook staff have until March to complete it. The following story by students from Maui High School on Maui is about a mother and her special needs child and their growth together. Nadia is a 14-year-old Maui Waina Intermediate School student who happens to have what's called a chromosome deletion. She enjoys many things. You like to twirl, Nadia? Yeah, you like to twirl. She likes to twirl. Where's your cow? Can you show your cow? What do you do with it? You twirl it, right? And she loves to go on her swing outside. We, have a, we made her a beautiful swing. She loves her pool. Again, you know, you just, you have to come up, you have to be very creative with her. Otherwise she will just go into like a zone and not really, you know, she won't go and pick up a toy and, or a puzzle or, and play with it. You have to engage with her and show her and say, look this and do this. So it's, it's a constant all day learning, playing experience. To date, more than 180 chromosome disorders have been discovered. However, Nadia has a unique kind of chromosome deletion. It's called uh, chromosome 22Q13.1.2 and there's really not anybody so far that they know is out there with the same, same deletion. This chromosome deletion has affected her and her family in a few different ways. Um, it affects her, you know, physically, it affects her mentally. She has several physical uh, 
or medical issues, I should say. It's, you know, she's very tiny. She can't chew or she can perfectly fine swallow, but she can't chew. Um, we, have, we have her on a feeding tube, so she gets hooked up at night to get extra calories in her. And then the mental part, you know, because if you don't know how to move your tongue and your mouth, you can't, you're not able to talk. But with the help of technology, Nadia and her family are able to communicate with each other. So she can click on pictures and words. Now we're going to try to learn words, actually. And maybe someday she can write. Because, again, I don't want to stop maybe like having her um, speak. Or I'm not going to say she'll never speak. Because she does speak. It's just her own language. She makes her own words. The 24-hour care can take a toll on a family. But for Nadia's family, working together and accepting help has made their bond even stronger. You know, there's a lot of times when there's special needs children in a, in a family, they grow apart, they, you know, one can't handle it, the other one just doesn't want to deal with it, but we're lucky that all four of us, you know, we're just, and then we have beautiful people that help us. So it takes, as we always say, it takes a village to raise a child, and that's true. This is Skylar Stoke from Maui High School for Hikino. We're here on the campus of Waikia Intermediate School in beautiful Hilo, Hawaii. Student population here is around 860 students. Among these students is a yearbook class whose assignment is to write, edit, design, and provide orders for our school's yearbook in time for graduation. This year's theme for our yearbook is kept a secret until the end of the year. Oh, this same team also created a video for an episode of tonight's Hiki No. What a group! The following story from students at Hilo's Waikia Intermediate School on Hawaii Island is about a local family farm that rescues the nearby high school whenever foul weather messes up their soccer season. Here's a question. When is a regulation soccer field a working farm in Hilo? When it's at OK Farms on Amau Ulu Road here above town. The farm has been in business for approximately 15 years. Ala Omoi Keolanui is marketing manager for the farm. Uh, it is a family business, yes. So our business partner, um, Mr. Ed Olsen, and my husband, Troy Keolanui, um, started Oki Farms in 2002. Our business is, um, we're a tree crop farm. So we grow macadamia nuts, coffee, a whole bunch of citruses, tropical fruits, hearts of palm, cacao. We have contracted tours that come to the farm. Um, and then I do the tours here, and we have our little gift shop. Ala Omoi runs the gift shop that specializes in spices and specialty items that are grown right on the family farm. Everyone gets involved. Um, our older two daughters have worked on the farm. Our 15-year-old is now working during the summers, um, and so our little ones, they help out when they can. Farming is life for us. Um, we're full-time on the farm, so we're Monday through Sunday pretty much, uh, 24 hours a day. So after we leave here from work, um, we live on the farm, and so we need to be aware of what's going on after hours as well. And how did the Omau Ulu soccer field become home of the Hilo High School Vikings, AYSO, and many other soccer clubs? So a lot of people um, wonder why we have a soccer field um, on our farm. And we're a big soccer family. And soccer families know that down Bay front where the fields are, it floods when it rains and it's just unsafe, um, unhealthy for the kids to play in. And so uh, what Troy did was we had this space and he said, I'm gonna build the soccer field and it's gonna be for the community. There is no official scoreboard, no lights, no concession stands, no bleachers to sit on. Restroom facilities are provided for use by OK Farms. Volunteers help to maintain the field by mowing, fertilizing, and keeping it clean. No one who uses the field gets charged. No one gets paid. And it's all for free. It's all for you guys. Everyone involved in the use of this soccer field understands the value of this wonderful gift that was given to the soccer families of Hilo. For the Keolanui family, Family, farming, and soccer are life. This is Brianne Spain from YK Intermediate School for Hiki No.
We now take you into the Hikino archives for the story of another community-minded farm, this time on Maui. Maui High School's Natural Resources Program is breaking new ground. People are realizing more and more that it's not only working in the dirt, it's high science, it's high math, it's high design. I mean, you actually have to be really, really smart and innovative and creative to work in agriculture. Since 2002, Ali'i Kula Lavender Farm has been planting, producing, and marketing lavender products worldwide from their 13-acre farm located on the slopes of Haleakala. Kind of more of a jungle, yeah? They help us like a lot because our ag field basically didn't have much. It started off really barren and a lot of things weren't as it should be. So they came down and they showed us like how to transplant from one thing to another. They gave us new plants to start off to make our horticulture look nicer. The agriculture program won't be the only one to benefit from this partnership. Make it work for you. I'd like to see business get involved. Um, art classes come and be able to work out in our fields. I'd like to see science classes come out and use our resources firsthand. So really it's gonna rejuvenate our program um, and make our program a resource for the rest of the school to use. This fresh look at agriculture will also help cultivate a new attitude toward farming. Uh, just having to dig the holes and uh, we gotta bring the compost. We're actually gonna come in and teach the students, the business of agriculture. It's not simply just planting a seed. The need to develop younger farmers came after the Weigerts attended last year's Maui County Farm Bureau's Agricultural Fest. It was brought to our attention that the average farmer is 60 years old. And that really puts us in a dire situation. It's not just for agriculture, it's more like agriculture is the foundation of growing um, stronger communities. Working on these gardens will be the horticulture students. It's actually good for producing food that you need, creating culture, I guess, and pretty much making the spaces that are dirt into something that's really beautiful. This is Fabreen Karyaga from Maui High School for Hikino. I'm going to be planting this. We're here on the campus of H.P. Baldwin High School in Wailuku, Maui. Baldwin High School's first yearbook was published in 1939. Like many yearbooks during that time, it was given a name. The Needle. It was named after Maui's historical landmark, the Iao Needle. The following story by students from H.P. Baldwin High School on Maui is about a young band teacher who returns to his middle school only to find out that it's not what he expected. I see the Iao School Band as a great achievement. David Karaya has been conducting the Iyao Intermediate School Band for five years. Uh, I started, uh, like most kids here in Maui, um, started in middle school, right here at Iyao School. My father was a band teacher here at Iyao School, and uh, my grandfather was the teacher at Kalani High School on Oahu. So band and teaching band is something that has been in my life for longer than I can remember. Unfortunately, when David returned to Iyao School, he found the band room in a devastated situation. The illustration that I used to describe coming to Iyao School was like, you know that part in The Lion King where Simba comes back and, to his home and everything is like burnt and on fire? <laughs> it was kind of like that. I came into this band room and instruments were broken, things were lost, papers were misfiled. Um, it was dirty, uh, there was graffiti all over the place. The morale of the students and the parents with regard to the band program was very low. So it was a tough time to come in, but, but also an exciting time. You know, this was my first job at the one place that I could never imagine myself. So the fact that Yao School opened up was uh, just really exciting. So yeah, there was a lot to clean up and get ready and move and throw away and find lost things, but uh, I was just really excited to start and to be with the students and um, yeah, I was just excited. <laughs> 
This energy and optimism helped David build the band up to what he knew. Now, David passes on his lessons of hard work and determination to his students. If, if my students learn anything from me from the time that they're here at EL School is that I want students to learn to do the best they can. For me, do the best you can meant always put my extra 10% in everything. He taught me to be the very best person I could ever be. For me, that's, uh, that's, that's enough. That's a big achievement for me. This, this band room, it's like my Millennium Falcon. It's like uh, this old beat-up band room, but it's like, it works. It means a lot to me and has a lot of great memories. With hard work and determination, David Karaya pushed through the adversity to bring the band up stronger than ever. This is Leanne Binas from HP Baldwin High School for Hikino. We are here on the campus of Ia School in Wailuku, Maui. Our school puts together our yearbook during an after-school yearbook club. The planning starts at the beginning of the year as students make a commitment to meet consistently and work hard. Creative design skills are taught to portray a visual story that captures the memories from the school year. Hard work pays off as students look forward to viewing and signing it at the end of the year. The following story by students from EL School on Maui is about a fun and easy way to make a paper Chinese lantern. Let there be light. In ancient China, lanterns were used to provide light. They were used in celebrations and worship. Today, Chinese lanterns can be seen all over the world. They can be used to provide elegant and charming decoration. They can also be a nice aesthetic to any home decor. Today, we will be crafting our very own version of the Chinese lantern. These lanterns are an inexpensive, easy, and fun way to decorate for any occasion. The materials you will need are two eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper of any color, scissors, glue, clear tape, or a stapler. When handling sharp objects, remember to exercise caution or get an adult to help you. First, fold one paper in half, lengthwise. Use a pair of scissors to cut strips across the fold. The distance between cuts can vary depending on your preference. It is important not to cut all the way across or your lantern will fall apart. The final strip should be cut all the way across to slightly shorten your paper. Place a thin strip of glue vertically on one end of your uncut paper. This will be the backing of the lantern. Unfold the cut paper and adhere one edge to the backing. Push the bottom of your cut paper away from you, leaving approximately two inches of space. Place another thin strip of glue on the backing of the paper and press down. Cut off the two inch strip of paper on the bottom of your backing and save that for your handle. Now here comes the trickiest part. Apply a line of glue on the side of your backing paper. Then roll the papers into a tube and join them together. You may want to secure the ends with tape or staples for extra support. Finally, glue or tape the handle to the inside of the tube. Place the lantern onto a flameless LED candle for the light effect. And there you have it, a simple Chinese lantern that you can use to decorate anything throughout the year. This is Kailani Ivanez from Iao School for Hiki No. We're here on the campus of Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School in La Jolla, Kauai. Our yearbook is created by the yearbook class under the direction of teacher Kevin Matsunaga. As soon as the yearbook is completed, the class immediately gets to work on the yearbook theme for the following year. Students work in teams to come up with new theme ideas by creating a mini sample book. This book and the theme ideas are presented to the class to be voted on. The top three ideas make it into round two where the ideas are discussed as a class. Students are asked to vote again for the top idea which then becomes the theme for the yearbook for the next school year. The yearbook students have come up with many different ideas over the years and the arrival of each new yearbook is highly anticipated. The following story by our advanced media students at Chief Kamakahele Middle School is about the power of video and how it helped to bring about positive change in the life of a boy with special needs. They just were more hesitant to like approach him. So just the, um, the looks, you know, in the cafeteria. Ethan Tevis was born with Soto Syndrome, a rare genetic disorder characterized by excessive physical growth for the first year of his life. It affects his appearance, movement, behavior, and his speech. 
I knew him when he was in his mom's stomach. Um, my connection, we have no blood relation, but I would consider him my cousin. I found out later on that people were giving him a hard time. And I felt kind of sad because he doesn't deserve that. Even the simplest tasks are hard for Ethan. So to help him cope with his disability, Ethan attends special sessions after school to practice his motor skills. He goes to these extra programs to be able to speak and be able to have a conversation with his classmates so that he can understand what they're saying. It's because a lot of people don't understand how to help them or how to act, interact with them. Students didn't know how to really approach him. Um, kind of at the beginning of the school year. So I think some students weren't very used to him. Since it was Disability Month, Ethan's mother, Miss Jennifer Tevis, asked Colton Guzman to make a video for Ethan, explaining what he normally goes through on his daily life to show to his classmates. I give um, Colton a lot of footage, you know, pictures from when he was a baby and a lot of videos. He really compressed it into a nice video that was a learning video as well. He was born with Soto syndrome, which affects his development, so it takes him a long time to do what you can do. After watching the video, Ethan's classmates better understood what Ethan goes through, and they started getting to know him. His teacher, Miss Shannon Kaku, could see Ethan's classmates had a change on their perspective on him. Because they knew how to communicate with him, and that they were more aware of him. We were classmates in the beginning, and then by the end, we were just, we were just a big third grade family. Kids are really friendly and they're all coming towards him, you know, and even when I visited the school as well, you know, everyone was, there was no, there was no hesitancy anymore. They were all like, like he was like everybody else. They're able to see a side of Ethan that they can't see at school. After watching the video, the kids learn just how important it is to understand others before judging them. They knew that it was, you know, very challenging to be someone with special needs. If you just get to know someone on your own, it's a better connection, it's a deeper friendship, it's a stronger relationship. And I think that's important in life. This is Tai Kajihara from Chief of Kamakahele Middle School for Hikino. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hikino. Remember, all of these stories are written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you enjoy watching them as much as we enjoyed sharing them with you. Be sure to tune in next week for more proof that Hawaii students hiki no. Can do. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.